A British study has revealed that conservatives' brains have larger amygdalas than the brains of liberals. Amygdalas are responsible for fear and other primitive emotions, which could explain why Republicans here in the U.S. are more susceptible to fear-mongering terror alerts than Democrats. At the same time, conservatives' brains were also found to have a smaller anterior cingulate, the part of the brain responsible for courage and optimism which is probably why liberals are generally more hopeful and willing to take on big, tough challenges like health care reform. Now, this isn't saying that liberals aren't immune to fear-mongering. Or that conservatives all are. Right. But it does slam home the point that when we elect conservative leaders, they're going to artificially play up threats to keep their political base engaged and supportive. Mm -hmm. And this is probably why Obama has been tapping into the conservative playbook of drumming up the fear of al-Qaeda and terrorism. Because he knows he's got to keep the people convinced that he's aware of and diligently fighting terror, even if he knows the threat is overblown. To me, this all just goes back to 9-11 and how we're still, nine years later, feeling the effects of that fateful day every day. Science has finally discovered the difference between Republicans and Democrats, and it all has to do with our brains. Researchers at Britain's University College in London did extensive testing on the brains of individuals who identified themselves as either liberal or conservative, and what they found was that the brains looked remarkably different depending on which way the individual leaned politically. It all centers on two parts of the brain, the amygdala and the anterior cingulate cortex. The amygdala, a part of your brain more ancient, it's part of the more ancient brain, processes fear and fight or flight responses, among other things, as well as fight and flight. The anterior cingulate cortex, or ACC on the other hand, which is more recent in our evolutionary functions, processes more rational cognitive functions and deals with complexity and understanding. What researchers found was that in conservatives, the amygdala, part of the ancient fear portion of the brain, was much larger than the evolutionarily newer ACC part of the rational brain. In liberals, the opposite was true. They had a much larger ACC and a much smaller amygdala. This could explain why Republicans are more sensitive to fear-producing political narratives like homeland security and war, while Democrats are more able to understand and see the nuances of social political concepts like the we society and equality, programs that require deeper levels of understanding and complex thought. But beyond just understanding the differences between the brain of a conservative and the brain of a liberal, it's even more important to take a look at how a brain develops differently to begin with. Why is it that some people have larger amygdala, amygdalas than ACCs and vice versa? It all happens in the womb. When a fetus is developing, the ancient parts of the brain develop first. It's sometimes called the reptilian brain because it's pretty much most of their brains, the reptiles. It's the fear-driven, most primal part of our brain. It's the fight or flight, the, the, the kill or be killed part. These ancient parts are the dominant parts of the brain, even today for modern day lizards, amphibians, and they even drive the behavior of highly evolved animals like you and me. They run the necessary skills to survive in the wild. They drive fear, which in people leads to things like Beliefs that Obama is a secret Muslim and the Antichrist. Oh, and he wants to take your guns away next week. But later, in the development of the fetus, another part of the brain develops, the more recently evolved parts, like the cortex and the ACC, and the new or neocortex, all working together so we can process complex emotions and rational thinking. This is the intellectual, actually the thoughtful part of our brain. And it's the part that's bigger in liberals, according to the UK study. And since this more recent part of the brain develops later and is evolutionarily more advanced and is what essentially separates us from animals, then it's this part of the brain that should be nurtured. It's this part of the brain that advances the human race, that allows our species to thrive. And unfortunately, this part of the brain is in danger. Consider a pregnant woman. The developing fetus is constantly asking mom, am I about to be born into a safe world or a dangerous world? This is, this is the question the fetus is asking mom. And the answer back comes chemically and the level of cortisol and other stress hormones 
in mom's blood, in the bloodstream that she has that is circulating through the baby, through the placenta. When the woman has a stressful pregnancy, like in a war setting or in a society rife with poverty and violence, mom produces lots of stress hormones like cortisol. That message chemically communicated to the fetus is, it's a dangerous world, get ready. The fetus does this by making the lizard part of the brain and the amygdala bigger and the ACC smaller. More fight or flight for the dangerous world, less deep thinking that would be a luxury in a safe world. Nature is preparing the child to survive in a violent environment by nurturing the fight or flight and fear mechanisms and trading off the more intellectual facilities or faculties. The child becomes more animalistic and their problem solving skills are often blunted and veer toward simplistic and violent resolutions. On the other hand, if a mother goes through a more peaceful and less stressful pregnancy, then the ACC and other more recent evolutionary parts of the brain develop more than the lizard brain and the amygdala. And though that child may lose some of its instinctual fight or fight skills and may not be as adept as living in the jungle alone, they do acquire the very useful intellectual capabilities that reside in this new, more evolved brain. They can reason better, think empathetically, solve problems without violent conflict. And considering our species has emerged from the most violent century in the history of mankind, the 20th century, that saw over 150 million of us slaughtered by war in one century, then I think we should embrace our more peaceful and our more human brains. That's why it's absolutely essential that we stop the Republican cuts to programs for women and children. Why it's so important that we strengthen our social safety net, particularly for the most vulnerable among us. If more children can be born with larger Einstein-like brains, then the future of our species is limitless. This is what's at stake. It may produce more liberals, but it'll also produce fewer wars. Undo the Republican cuts today. The world's future may well depend on it.